What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome back to episode 20 of Park to Prem here with Town Law Town. It is the start of February. There's quite a lot to talk about to be honest. Yes, we've been through the January transfer window. We have not been busy in the market in terms of signing players. In fact, um, no, we've not really signed anyone. There's a couple of players actually that we did sign since like I've last talked about signings, but no one really for the first team. Uh, Abdi Sharif joined us just as a good young prospect kind of like how flexible he is he does hold down a spot in the first team as almost third choice right back but yeah he's kind of the backup of all backups but at 21 you know fairly inexpensive just rounds off the team quite nicely the other player we've actually signed is motley who is a former uh, player for salford he's played a few times in league two way back when at the start of his career had a rather unsuccessful loan spell and then was re was released so he's only 19 an international with some okay ability he's not really challenging for the first team but just, you know, adding a few more young prospects that could develop into something, but I'm not really expecting them to develop into anything. On the outs, though, we have lost some big players. Let's talk about them. The first is Yarosh. He has left us to join a team whose name I'm not going to try and say. They play in the Czech Republic. He's their star player. Their value is significantly larger than ours. So, um, yeah, not, not entirely surprised to see him go. A little bit of an issue, I guess, in the goalkeeping position. And the other player we've lost is Luke Billum, who, who has gone off to Newport County. So, yeah, not ideal. One of our big kind of star players, a player who really had come into some form over the last month or so. And very recently, we've lost him. So uh, it's been a while since we've had some players poached, but there you go. Uh, Sotona, who we talked about last episode but wasn't fit. He has been fit. He has started to make one or two appearances for us, but... Given the fact he's coming back from a broken ankle, I feel like it's going to take him a little bit of time to get up to speed. So anyway, we have recently finished some coaching courses, which is great stuff. I think we'll start by having a quick look at the profile. You can see here the attributes. Now got our national B license. Obviously, our past playing experience is not going to change. But always nice to, I guess, continue to notch up some managerial accolades when it comes to coaching badges. You can see 138 games played and we've now won 100 matches in our career with a very, very good win percentage. So, yeah, uh, slowly but surely making progress two and a half years into this save game. And we don't look quite as terrible as we did when we begin, uh, well, when we began things here at Tau Law. In the beginning, it wasn't good. It's getting better, slowly but surely, but I'll level with you. I have looked at some other jobs. Yes, this is this is not, as you guys know, this is not strictly a one-club save. So there's two teams that I want to talk about. There's one team that I think people will be more interested in seeing me managing. There's one that is a little bit of a weird one. Let's talk with a little bit of a weird one to begin with. It's Leyston here. Um, they are a team, I believe, in the Suffolk slash, slash Norfolk region, somewhere between Ipswich and Norwich. They play in the same tier as us. They're currently 17th. Their media expectation was 8th. You might wonder, Jack, why would you want to go here? Well, from the law perspective, lots of my family is from Norfolk, so I'd be moving a little closer to home from Tau Law. But... They got bought out by a tycoon last year and they turned professional. Um, they are a professional club playing in the same tier that we play in now, albeit in a slightly different division. So that's club number one. I've got an eye on them. That's the club that I think I'd be more likely to get the job at if I applied. The other job is Bolton Wanderers. Yes, Bolton Wanderers, who have been relegated back-to-back -back years and currently sit 13th in the Vanarama National League. They have Vastic as their manager, who has struggled. Apparently, his job is very much at risk. You can see they're also in the process of a board takeover. Finances are insecure. I don't know if we get we would get the job if we applied for it because of Bolton's reputation, but if the job did come up, oh, I feel like I'd have to be tempted into it, right? You know, I, I feel like it'd be worth a go. I don't think we'd get it, but... It's a very, very cool, unique opportunity. Bolton Wanderers, who have tumbled down through the Football League, they have sold off their youth facilities as well, which is why they just don't exist. They have struggled ever since the start of this save game. You know, the point deduction season one in League One. And I don't know. If that job came up, I'd apply for it. I don't know if we'd get it. But I guess Leyston is a little more up in the air. I feel like the Bolton one, my heart says it could be a very good move. But let me know what you make of either of those teams. They're quite different in terms of what they could offer. But I feel like both, for slightly different reasons, would offer a logical next step on from Tau Law 
if we were to make the move. Obviously, I'm talking about leaving Tau Law as if some really bad stuff's happening. I'll level with you. We have found some form. Last episode, we took on Hashtag. Since then, we have played six games in all competitions. We did, unfortunately, crash out of the Southern League Cup. We lost against Newark Flau Serve. They play in the league above us. They've had back-to-back -back promotions. They're a very, very good team. Um, yeah, unfortunate to lose to them. But they, it's just, they're just a great team. That Some of their players are good. Should we have beaten them? Probably when you look at the thing, things on paper. But it was a 2-1 hard-fought battle. You can see, statistically, we could argue we were the better team. But it didn't really show in the finishing, unfortunately. But besides that, we have kind of steadied the ship. We have been on a bit of a... A mix run of form. And I feel like we finally found something. So you can see we took on Fairham Town and won 5-2. Kumwenda with 2. Luke Billam 2. And Akeem Rose ending his goal scoring drought with a goal there. You'll notice that Billam's got a lot of goals prior to his departure to Newport County. So he is going to be missed. In the next game we took on Deerham. 2-0 win there. Max Voltman from the penalty spot. Leighton Stewart as well getting in on the action. We then had that disappointing cup game. And then in our last three league games as we've refocused. Two clean sheets. Two wins, one draw. Slimbridge we beat 5-0. We ran at rampant. Billum again with two. Leighton Stewart with two as well. This guy slowly getting there. I say slowly getting there. He's always been there, hasn't he? Let's be honest. 31 goals in all competitions. If I do move clubs, he's one of those players who I would be desperate to try and make move with us. And of course, if we move to uh, Leighton or Bolton, we would be able to approach any player from Towlaw on a free transfer. Because, yeah, they're not on a contract. So that could be interesting, of course, assuming the player would want to join us. We then took on Froome Town. It finished 0-0. Boar draw. Kind of glad we didn't live con that one. Of course, we played them earlier on in the year. Um, I said they could be called From Town. Everyone in the comments was saying it's From Town, like Rome. It's not. The football club actually tweeted me to confirm it's Froome, like Broom. I don't know. I mean, it shouldn't be read like that by the laws of English, but I'm not going to question it. From town, though, nil-nil draw. Um, given the context of this result, a good result, because the team we played to get day, Evesham, have struggled, but in isolation, a little disappointing. We did bounce back well, though. A 3-1 win against Scholing. Josh Harrison with a goal. James Norris with an absolutely superb goal in this game. I will show that to you now. The left-back banging it in. What a finish it was. For the, uh, the Ginger Ninja. However, in this game, he sprained his ankle ligaments. And he's out for a while. Uh, well, I say a while. A few weeks. But definitely less than ideal. He's been in some really good form, the left back. Has slowly but surely developed into one of our star players. And uh, just on the whole, things have turned a corner. I feel like we've started to get some results together. Um, it's kind of funny. Last episode, we talked about the tactical changes I had made. After I recorded last episode against Hashtag, I went back to watch all the previous game's highlights to put in that episode. Um, obviously, as you guys know, I put the highlights of games in. And as I watched through the games, I started to realise, actually, our old tactic, our old 4-4-2 wasn't that bad. We were dominating games. We were just getting very unfortunate with long shots. So with that in mind, I went back to the tactics and I started working on a halfway house between what we had before... And what we have now. And this is what we've ended up with. So um, the tactics have changed since last episode. The wing backs, which were full backs on support. And before that were wing backs on support. And now actually wing backs on attack. And they've been doing really, really well. And synergizing well with the inverted wingers playing on ahead. In the midfield, we've now changed one of the centre mid uh, roles. To have the defend duty. So that offers a little bit of protection. When the wing backs are going forward. And elsewhere, we've changed the inverted wing back, wingers to inverted wingers and kept the striking roles the same. Uh, in terms of just other stuff, out of possession, we've now got standard whip for defensive whip. Uh, in transition, I've switched to counter press, which has worked really nicely. And in possession, we're being a slightly more direct with our play, um, whereas previously we had been playing slightly shorter. But just a few little tweaks, you know, a few minor adjustments. And I feel like we've got something that's working now here. Now, obviously, Billum, lo losing him in the wide area is a bit of a concern. But we have got Satona, who now comes in, who's a very, very similar player. And actually, I was a little worried that City Best was just going to get dropped completely from the first team um, with all the players we had in the wide areas. But due to the departure of Billum, he's on the bench for us. But this is the team that I've been settling with a lot. I feel like Harrison has a lot to offer out on the left and hasn't really done so so far this year. 
definitely got a point to prove. Satona, still very early days. You know, he's still lacking a lot of match sharpness, only 68%. He's been out for the best part of five months with a broken ankle, so I'm not going to criticise him too much. Going forward, we've been banging in a lot of goals, and while recently at the back there's been a few changes as well. We're forced into a double change in the fullback position due to McLaughlin being suspended and James Norris's injury. So Sharif is going to make a live com debut at right back. Choosing him ahead of Tom Nixon, just because Tom Nixon isn't very good going forward. One dribbling, free crossing, just lacks some of the technicals I need from my attacking wing back. And on the left, we're going to go with Andre Brooks, who's been playing very, very well. And alongside them, an interesting player, Skerritt, has just found some form. He's been doing really, really well, the former Sheffield United Academy prospect. 19 years old, linking alongside Brooks, who's also formerly of Sheffield United. So they've got a little bit of an understanding going on. Um, and they are all going to be playing alongside Mr. International. Alex Evans's form has been pretty disappointing as of late. So despite starting 28 games this year... I've demoted him to kind of third choice centre back. Pretty, we've given some chances to the Bosnia and Herzegovina uh, youth kind of international at centre back. But much like Skerritt, he's not a player who's super versatile in terms of ball playing ability. And to be honest, Skerritt has just been the player showing a little bit more form and has kind of locked down this position. So this is the team that we're going to go with going into today's game. I mentioned Evesham and the fact they've been struggling. I kind of built this episode last time as being this big crunch game at the top of the table. If we just look at their recent form, you can see they've really not been playing too many games. In the last three months, they have played a measly 11 games, including a double header in the FA Trophy where they ended up losing. But their superb defensive record has come crumbling down and, well... You can see here, they've got through this season, Evesham, by winning by one goal a lot of times. They don't score many goals at all. In fact, looking through this, there's only a handful of games where they've scored more than two. And in a lot of them, you can see they just score one or two. Um, but their defensive record, which was the big thing propping them up, a hell of a lot of clean sheets here, has just stopped. And as a result, we've pulled ahead of them. We're eight points ahead of them. They have got a game in hand on us here. But a win here with eight games remaining of the season would really put us in pole position to win the league. So that's the aim at hand. If we could win this game with eight games after the end of the year, I anticipate next episode would be the end of season episode of us hopefully hoisting a trophy above our head and preparing for next year with our standard end of season live cop. That would be the dream. A win here would put us in a really good position to do just that. Of course, if a few jobs come up, if we get any interviews, if we get any job offers at Laidston or um, alternatively... Bolton we'd probably have to consider that as a, another episode where we just talk about the decision making and if it's worth doing but yeah please do let me know obviously I know a lot of you are attached to Tau Law I do feel like Bolton would be really really exciting also this is horrific who who placed these floodlights here at Evesham it's a good job we're not Evesham manager because these floodlights would be doing my head in at least they're not obscuring the goal I guess trying to find the silver linings Anyway, Harker here with it in goal, of course, with Yarosh going. Harker, who we signed at the end of last year, anticipating to be our starting keeper. Um, he was kind of displaced with Yarosh coming in, but as things have transpired, he now finds himself in the team again. And while Henry Kumwenda have a chance for the penalty spot, it's not going to be obscured too much, although it looks like the linesman is playing Where's Wally. Kumwenda, can you put us ahead? Can you alleviate a few of the nerves? Of course he can. And knowing Evesham's goal-scoring record, you probably now back us to go on and just execute a really good win here. That's what I want to see. I want to see us free-flowing and scoring. Despite all the result troubles we've had, one thing that has remained a constant throughout this year has been our strikers scoring goals. We have been banging them in for fun. And especially recently, I feel like the commitment to have wing-backs on attack partnered with a centre-mid kind of offering the defensive duty has really worked wonders for us you can see just how far our wing backs get up on either side really has caused teams problems when we double up in the wide areas anyway Skerritt reads the ball well gives it to Brooks the Sheffield United younglings linking up there and well we've got the ball we're pressing them hard trying to force an error out they actually beat the press Skerritt though that's why we've got him in there I think he has 18 jumping he used every inch of it right there and now Harrison has it uh, had it is probably the optimal term there he has smashed it over the crossbar a wasteful effort from him and it remains 1-0 I don't know I'm very settled here at Tau Law, but 
at the same time, I had a save. Some of you will remember, I had a save with Lewis FC, and the series was called Tracksuit to the Top. And the idea was that I hopped between teams and then I never left. There was a little part of me that regretted it, and as much as I admire and loved the progress that we made here at Towlaw, I think both, um, well, mainly Bolton. Bolton would be really interesting. It would be a little bit of a jump up. It would be a two-division jump, which I know to some people might feel a little bit large. But given where they could be at, I just feel like it could be a really, really exciting opportunity if the job comes up, of course. These two jobs I'm talking about, neither manager has been sacked yet, so maybe I'm getting ahead of myself. As Sheriff whips in the ball, come Wenders there. And that's exactly what I'm talking about. The wing-backs on attack has really changed things for us. It's been one of those roles which I have been playing around with a lot. We've gone from, at the start of the year, wing-backs on support to full-backs on support. Now we're going with wing-backs on attack, and I feel like it's unlocked another level for us. Sheriff, superb ball in on his debut, mind you. Not a bad ball in at all. And Henry Kumwenda on for the hat-trick now. And, well, Evesham don't score goals. They usually just defend really well. We could have another Kumwenda on the volley. Williams collects this one. But we are all over them like a nasty rash. I'm trying to think of like a type of rash. Is impetigo a rash? I think that's like a skin infection. We're all over Evesham like impetigo. That's not a thing. If you've never had impetigo, it's horrible. I had it as a kid, I feel like. I think I got it from a swimming pool at a French camping site. These are deeply like repressed in my mind memories that are coming to fruition here. It's what happens when you come to Evesham and have to stare at the floodlight. That feels unpractically close to the side of the pitch, that floodlight. I'm, I'm going to level with you. Mr. International with the header. Collected by Williams. He's keeping them in it at the moment. Their manager's doing a good team talk. So I want to do a good team talk. It wasn't a good team talk. I mean, Harker's shitting himself. Pardon my French, but he's not, he's not enjoying himself, is Harker. 2-0, though. We are we're doing well. More of the same, please, boys. Right. I mean, Evesham don't score goals. I'm feeling really good. Come on, get your hat trick. He should have got his hat trick. He could still get his hat trick. He's not got it yet. He had an existential crisis. Which unfortunately meant that we didn't go anywhere. Although, we're on the attack again here. Harrison. To Macaulay Power, who is back fit. I feel like him getting fit and us finding form is not, you know, unrelated. He really has been key for us, the centre mid. Obviously, last year we had, was it Haygarth? Last year, he was our like standout player. We lost him. We never really replaced him. And Macaulay Power, alongside Chanka Zimba, they've kind of emerged now as just our best centre mid pairing when they're both fit. We need to defend this here. That looked offside. It's not been given. What is happening? We're just lumping the ball forward now. I know we've changed things to be slightly more direct, boys, but come on, keep the ball on the deck. Cook here has an effort. Harker collects it. Was that the highlight? That can't have been the highlight, can it? I feel like there's more to come. And well, Stuart, can he show there's more to come? What a finish that is. That was an angry finish. There was a lot of aggression in that smashing finish into the top left corner. And you can kind of see why Evesham have fallen off the pace. After 20 games, they hadn't lost all year. They have really struggled in the last couple of months. And we're making their defence look fragile at best. Leighton Stewart smashing it into the top bins. We'll take that all day, every day. And on the hour, I can probably look to make a change or two if I want. Anyway, on the hour, Macaulay Power to have it. Dealing with it now. I mean, I want Conwender to get a hat-trick. Can we read this? Mr. International, Skerritt a little out of position. Please get back with your man, Skerritt. Get goal side. Sanger now with Bayless. Zimba, though. Chanka Zimba. Take a bow. Stuart threaded through. Could he get his second? Of course he can get his second. We're on the new match engine. Strikers finish one-on-ones. 33 for the year. Chanka Zimba with the assist. You know what? Jobs are good and I don't want to watch the highlight. I don't need to watch it. Let's make some changes. Sunny Best. Get on the pitch. I'm also going to bring in... I wanted to bring in Voltman, but I can't really justify it when we're winning like we are. Satona's still struggling in terms of match up, so I'm going to take him off. And Skerritt's also a little tired, bless him. He's been playing a lot regularly, and he hasn't got the best natural fitness. So we'll take him off and bring in Alex Evans for a triple change at 4-0 up, even if we were to get an injury. 
I'd feel quite confident in our ability to see out the game at 4-0 up despite being a man down. Ten minutes left, Mr International over the free kick, dinks it in for Akeem Rose, falls to Sonny Best. What can he do? He started the season so hot, Sonny Best. He's fallen off the pace, but he's got a chance on off the bench against a tiring Evesham side to show us what he's made of as Cook brings the ball forward and smashes it well, well wide of the mark. Did we really need to see that game? Apparently the fans are leaving the stadium already with eight minutes left. I didn't notice any of them to begin with. But if they want to leave, I can't blame them. Harker makes an interesting stop there. I don't know what to say to that save. I mean, technically it's not gone in, so I guess it's a great save. But it wasn't overly convincing by our keeper. We now have a corner to defend. There's 50 seconds left. Let's hold on to our clean sheet. It's gone over everyone. And... I guess we'll take the goal kick. 30 seconds left. This feels like just a long, pointless highlight to end things. But savour it whilst we can. Six clear-cut chances. Six half chances. In many ways, Evesham are lucky this is only finished 4-0. It could have been a few more. But we have embarrassed them. And this is why we've pulled ahead of them at the top of the table. We are just finding our feet again. And they've lost their feet. They've looked down and they're just not there anymore. 4-0 it finishes, two players get embraces, I'm very, very happy. And Evesham are going to go tumbling down the table now, you imagine. Although they do still have a game in hand on us, and with eight games remaining, they could still come back. So maybe I shouldn't talk too much smack about them, getting a little carried away perhaps. If they win their game in hand, they would be eight points behind us with eight games remaining. Leighton Stewart, what a performance that was by him. Sharif impresses on his debut. He had a very, very good debut at 8.1. I mean, when you look at him, obviously, naturally a centre mid. We've been training him to play right back. You can see why, as a right back at this level, despite having one flare and five off the ball, he can definitely do a job for us. Just as our kind of um, really good right back option in the absence of uh, McLaughlin, who obviously, unfortunately, wasn't available. I guess I, I just want to check. Did Bolton sack their manager? Did you sack him, Bolton? Did you lose? No, they beat Kettering. Disaster. What about Laidston? They lost 3-0. I mean, Rob, mate, your job's got to be at risk. It's got to be at risk. Shirley, 17th in the league. Could they get relegated? If they get relegated, suddenly they're a lot less appealing as a team to go and manage. Although, they look pretty safe. I don't know. Obviously, if we did move to this side... It would mean staying in the same tier for another year, but longer term it might help us. I did also notice, just, you know, as you do, hashtag United, currently in the process of a board takeover. We'll keep an eye on that. I always feel like it's interesting seeing what teams get taken over by tycoons, you know, what teams go rocketing up and down leagues. Perhaps that's something that we could cover next episode as part of the end of season catch-up, is just, you know, what's happened over the first three years of our time here at Towlaw. But anyway, guys, that's going to wrap up everything from me. It feels a little bit strange to be recording what is basically the second to last episode of the season in February. But you can just see with the way the fixtures line up, eight games left um, ending in April. We've got Winchester to end the year. Hopefully we can be, well, rifling them in against them. See, see what I did? There? Win rifling? Winchester? No. Okay, never mind. Right. That pun is terrible. I'm going to go on that note. Thank you for watching as always, guys. I'll see you again soon. It is me, Jack, and uh, yeah, I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.